Hello, everyone, and welcome. My name is Amy Morgan, Associate Vice President of Programs for the Winter Park Chamber of Commerce. Welcome to our Securing Your Business series. We are thrilled to be in our seventh week of holding daily webinars Monday through Thursday to help you navigate the COVID-19 pandemic and now transition to that return to work period. We're excited to be here for you virtually as we continue to identify and serve our mission of convening and equipping businesses in the Winter Park community. I see some of you have already introduced yourself in the chat box as you know the drill. Um, we would like to encourage you to take this opportunity to do a little bit of virtual networking and connecting by letting us know who you are and maybe sharing some of your reopening plans for your business in the chat box. If you're on Zoom, share that information by clicking on the chat icon on the bottom of your screen and setting the to field to all panelists and attendees so we're able to all see your responses. If you are watching on Facebook, you know what to do. Um, drop a comment and let us know what's going on with your business as you transition into this reopening phase and over the next couple of weeks. Wonderful, I see lots of people are um, chatting in our chat box on Zoom, so wonderful to see that. So as I mentioned, we are thrilled to be continuing our Securing Your Business series. Um, we started this up seven weeks ago as a way to continue to serve our community. Um, we've held all sorts of different experts and speakers, including the Congresswoman Stephanie Murphy, um, we had the Assistant County Attorney on, lots of local businesses and best practices shared. Um, so thrilled to continue to be able to serve you and share expert information with you. So today, I am excited to announce a um, wonderful speaker that we have and an extremely timely um, and important speaker. We will be talking today about the legal requirements and best practices in a COVID-19 world. Um, this is especially timely as we all start considering how we may return back to our normal or semi-normal workspaces. So today we have with us Mark Van Valkenburg. Um, he is a managing attorney and he has been managing his own firm for the past 15 years, specializing in employment law and mediation services. He was previously with Alan Norton and Blue, um, also Winderwheel Haynes, Ward and Woodman, and Matthew Smith, Rayleigh and Seculet. Um, he's been practicing business and commercial litigation for 15 years. He holds an AB rating from Martindale Hubble and gained extensive experience in trying cases in state and federal courts. Mark has been a Florida Supreme Court certified mediator for the past 10 years and an adjunct professor at Barry University School of Law teaching for the past 13 years. Welcome Mark, we are so thrilled to have you here with us today. All right, Mark, we Got can it. see you, Got there you go. Now Wonderful. you can hear me. We can see, uh, we can hear you, welcome. Thank you, I appreciate it, I'm glad to be here. Um, I appreciate the introduction. Didn't realize I was going to get the whole um, history of 25 years, but I guess the important thing is um, that I do practice employment law, um, been involved with the chamber, I'll tell everybody, um, for a good long while. Uh, those of you who have, have been involved and been through the leadership program, I'm from class, one of the, the few remaining from class 10 and actually chaired maybe 12 and 13 after that um, great program. So I'd encourage you, um, uh, particularly when it when you can actually get out and, and do it again um, to join that um, great way to uh, mix and mingle with others and uh, also learn a lot about our community. Um, I don't know, Amy, if you want me to just get uh, get started right away. Sure, let's go ahead and get started. If you'd like to share your screen, that would be great. All and right. while you're getting that warmed up and, and shared, I'll say thank you, Mark, for the unbelievable plug for Leadership Winter Park, which um, I do run Leadership Winter Park, and I'll share with this group that we are planning our Class 31 to kick off in the fall 
as previously planned. And actually, Leadership Winter Park applications are due this Friday. So more information to come on that this week. And so excited to have you on, Mark, as one of our oldest alumni. So excited to hear your presentation, and thank you. Great. Um, well, I appreciate everybody for being here. I saw a couple names that I uh, recognize, some people who um, either um, lawyers who are do practice employment law or, or maybe some people who are involved in HR. Um, this is uh, a new world um, that we've been living in over the past, what, six weeks or so, um, and things change all the time. So I welcome those people to um, unmute themselves and chime in if they've got something that, that, that um, they think is uh, would be helpful to add. Um, or if I've gotten something wrong, because um, I certainly am, am uh, it wouldn't be the first time. Um, I appreciate y'all allowing me to stumble through this. I'm used to talking in court. I'm used to teaching at uh, Perry School of Law, but I'm used to doing those live and in person rather than um, on a computer screen where one, I have to look at myself and two, I have to um, control um, what I'd say are maybe too many buttons for um, somebody who's 54 years old. Um, but uh, the good thing, well, I'll just start, I think, um, you know, moving through the, the presentation. Um, I think that the the good thing to say is there's not um, for uh, for those of uh, most of most of the businesses out, out there are considered really a low risk um, business for our low risk chance of infection, um, and so in those businesses there's not a whole lot of requirements. Um, with respect to what you have to do um, in terms of getting your business ready or um, operating your business or what you do with your employees. Now this um, talk is gonna focus primarily on um, keeping your employees safe. And uh, you'll see from the slide that I considered uh, really four sources of information. And that's the information from the Centers for Disease Control, um, OSHA, the EEOC, and uh, probably the biggest one is simply common sense, because I think as we go through, you'll realize that um, much of, of what I talk about is, is are things that you've probably been doing if you're, you've been sheltering at home, um, you know, not self-quarantining, but um, you know, certainly practicing safe safe habits and safe practices, uh, it's going to be the, an expansion of that um, as you move in back back to work and back with your employees. Um, I think it's a good reminder. I was just um, saying, to, telling Tiffany and Amy that um, I just spoke to a woman who um, told me that um, you know the numbers are very skewed and there's not really that as many cases in Florida as are being reported. Um, the media has blown everything out of proportion. Um, whether you believe that or not, um, there are um, a lot of people out there who are still scared. Um, you, know, you see the protests um, about reopening um, for reopening, but there's still, you talk to people, there's still a lot of people who um, are afraid of the virus, um, older older folks, people who are, um, you know, perhaps have a underlying medical condition. And, uh, you know, it's certainly a, a, a fact that this virus, um, while a lot of people uh, may have it and not know it, this virus um, kills people. So I saw my aunt um, this weekend outside and put my chair down with what I thought was six feet away and she made me get up and, and back up. So that would be the type of, of example of somebody who may, may be coming back to work. Um, employees are individuals with different life situations. Um, employees um, may not want to come back to work and may not come back to work. Others may be 
may not want to come back to work, but may feel forced to come back to work. Um, and in fact, I've had calls with, with from HR folks who ask about you know, their, their concern that somebody is sick. Um, and those people may not want to share that information with you because they don't want to be off, off of work. Um, and so you've got to, um, I think, be prepared to be uh, vigilant, but also flexible. Um, one way to um, help with that will be a lot of communication. Communication will help in, ease employees' anxiety. Um, as I said, most places, workplaces are considered to be low risk environments. That might be the first thing that I tell employees um, as you invite them to um, re-enter the workforce. Um, and ultimately, your goal, is, your ultimate goal is to effectively operate your business. And you can't do that if you don't have employees, meaning they don't come back or, or you're scaring them off again or they're sick. Um, you can't do that if um, you don't make your customers feel, feel comfortable. Um, and so it's going to depend a, a lot on what type of business that you run. Um, you know, I obviously have um, a sole, sole practice law firm, um, but um, in my practice, I don't, I, I spend a lot of time talking on the phone to people. I don't necessarily have to go out and see people a lot. Um, and I have a, a pretty strong, solid um, client base. So I'm going to see a lot of the same people over and over again. Obviously, a restaurant is would be a, a much different situation, um, in which case uh, you may need to provide more um, or some um, um, what P PPE, um, you know, protective devices like masks or um, even hand sanitizer. Um, both for employees and for clients um, or customers. Um, I think it's important to be prepared to be flexible with leave. Uh, most employers have some sort of a leave pro um, policy, uh, but again, if somebody has um, uh, you know, doesn't needs needs the money, um, do you want them coming in and trying to hide their their illness um, because they want to get paid? Or do you want them to be forthcoming? And um, you know, even if they perhaps haven't qualified for leave yet, um, I'm not going to talk about it. I think it's been talked about in a previous um, Winter Park webinar. But um, remember that there is the emergency paid leave and extended um, family medical leave out there for employees, and that requires um, most employers to provide paid leave, a certain amount of paid leave um, for um, specified reasons. Um, you might consider advancing, and, I, and you'll hear me say consider a lot. I may not have written it all the time. Um, a lot of this is, is suggestions as you um, uh, either go back to work or bring more people in. These are suggestions as to things that you might consider um, doing as you plan um, for an increase or a, a return to work. Um, so consider advancing sick leave to employees or allowing employees to donate sick leave to each other. Um, remember, and this is where the EEOC comes in, that employers with 15 or more employees may be required to accommodate an employee with a disability. So um, I won't conduct the analysis, but what if somebody comes to you and says, you know, I have COPD, um, so I'm high risk, I'm 105 years old, and um, so I'm very concerned that coming to work um, puts me, you know, at, at risk of serious, serious illness or even death. Um, so I want to, um, you know, I, I want to work from home. Um, you know, is that an accommodation that you have to provide? Um, you know, we, um, you can, it, it, it may depend on the individual circumstances, but you just need to be aware of uh, when that question comes, comes to your attention. Um, and again, with the flexibility, you know, an example, a sick leave policy does not cover time off to care for a sick family member. You know, do you want that person coming into to, to work? 
Um, they're not showing any symptoms. Um, and and um, so you may not um, catch it if they are, um, or you, you, may, you may never know that they've got a sick family member at home. But, um, you know, if, if you have told people that you will provide leave, um, then perhaps they're more willing to share that and you can uh, keep them out of the workforce or week workplace. Um, creating a, a plan to com combat COVID-19. And, and I know that some, a lot of people are, have been at least partially still working, um, but some places have, have cut down or, or uh, closed down altogether. Um, things to consider as you um, start to open up or start to bring back more employees. Um, you know, what employees are necessary to operate your business? Uh, what are those employees' job duties? So what are they gonna need to do um, at the workplace? Um, what equipment is necessary for those employees? Um, what else? Any of these employees in higher risk categories, the older workers or those with chronic, chronic medical conditions? Um, where, how, and to what sources of COVID-19 might employees be exposed? So that's other employees, um, visitors, customers, um, potentially um, you know, getting down to specifics in the office of shared equipment. Um, and then finally, you know, what is the current layout of your workplace? So you wanna look and see, um, you know, because uh, the first thing that we talk about when returning to work is the number one thing that we've been talking about for at least the last month, which is social distancing. And if you read the governor's order, um, you know, one of the first things that he says um, at the, the top of the order is all persons shall continue to limit their personal interactions outside the home, um, avoid non-essential travel, senior citizens and those um, who, who may be subject to illness should remain home. Um, so a lot of it still is maintain social distance. So all we're, you know, we're going back to work, um, but we're going back to work and still trying to maintain our social distance. So how can we do that? Well, how much, how effectively has teleworking working, uh, worked for some or all of your employees? Um, if it's working, do you consider continuing that? Uh, one, if um, some of the employees can continue to telework, that reduces the number of people um, at the workplace and uh, obviously helps then your social distancing. Um, some businesses that I represent have Im implemented staggered shifts, so you don't have as many people there at, at the same time. Um, how much can you limit exposure to new people? So by postponing non-essential meetings, continuing these Zoom meetings, um, and then minimizing the number of customers, clients, and guests. You know, can, if you're gonna, if you're a restaurant, um, then can you stop people from coming in? And do you wanna stop people from coming in and eating? No, heck no. But if I just say, if my customers are people who may just say, for example, be occasionally picking up documents, um, why bring those people all the way into your office? Um, say, you know, uh, call reception or call me um, when you arrive and I'll gladly um, bring them out and, and deliver them to you, that type of thing. Um, increased space between workers. I said before, look at your work workspace. Um, so what can you do, um, if anything, in your in your office to try to, to maintain the six feet distance that everybody uh, says is a safe distance between individuals. Um, can you create partitions? Everybody's seen it um, at Publix and at uh, now at the Winter Park Post Office where you've got big sheets of plastic um, between you and the postal workers or um, at least a smaller sheet of plastic between you and the grocery store. Um, I don't know what you call them, attendant. Um, stagger employees return dates. And this is the idea, a little bit of what, what uh, they're doing with restaurants and other businesses. Okay, let's open it up at 25%. 
and see how we do. Um, and we'll go to 50, we'll go to 75. So, um, you know, if you can um, operate your business and, you know, start your bit operating your business by bringing in, you know, a percentage of workers first, um, then maybe that's a, a uh, something that you do. Um, finally, um, and I've said just close, close the break room, um, you know, look at the places where people uh, historically have gathered together. Um, I can tell you that, um, you know, what I, my understanding is that in a lot of workplaces, they're still gathering together there. Um, and so if you want to eliminate or uh, enforce social distancing, it may be necessary to do things like close the break room or um, other places where people gather um, on a regular basis. Um, implementing infection pre prevention me measures. And again, this is not um, anything that's required by the CDC or OSHA, but things that you can consider. How much do they cost? How easy are they to do? Um, CDC is, uh, it, and OSHA are big on um, increasing ventilation in the workplace. Um, so high efficiency air, air filters also will um, screen out um, some of the virus, increasing the ventilation rates and increasing the amount of outside air circulating into the workplace. Uh, temperatures creeping up, but it seems like uh, we have one or two days a week still, um, at least the last few weeks where um, you have cooler temperatures uh, and so potentially could open some windows and circulate um, some fresh air. Um, install physical barriers. Uh, you know, this is, I would say, more for uh, where you've got more outside people coming in. Um, obviously, a sneeze guard is one of those um, type of, of physical barrier. Um, you know, can you potential or uh, temporarily eliminate unnecessary shared use equipment, such as refrigerators and vending machines. I mentioned the post office before, I went to the post office a few days ago, um, I guess this weekend, because I used their machine to get the postage and it's, uh, it was you know filthy with fingerprints and, and uh, because it's a touch screen and you could see it all something that you probably wouldn't have uh, even noticed um, two months ago, but there it is. Um, so, you know, if you've got vending machines that 30 people are pushing the same button every day, um, maybe it's time to take those out of circulation for a little bit. Um, and the other alternative, and we'll talk about that later, is, um, you know, providing some sort of um, cleaning supplies or, or wipes or something so that Somebody who op opens the refrigerator can close the refrigerator and, and immediately wipe down the handle. Um, reconfigure the workplace, increase spacing. Um, everybody's, uh, lots of people have been to Publix where one-way pathways. Um, so can you make create one-way pathways through the workspace? So um, you're not having people, uh, one, pass each other closely close by, or two, um, you know, uh, it decreases the le may decrease the level of traffic past specific individuals um, in the workplace. Um, policies and procedures for prompt identification and isolation of sick people. Um, first, you should be uh, at this point. Everybody should know the symptoms of um, COVID nineteen, but you should tell uh, or remind your employees. And a lot of uh, what I would suggest is, uh, and I think um, this PowerPoint will be made available um, by the chamber. If not, you're welcome to, to call me um, or email me and I'll send it to you. Um, but develop some policies um, and, and give them to your employees. And that might include uh, something that says, here's the symptoms, which you can cut and paste from the internet um, and tell them how to self-monitor. Uh, you might question employees as they come in every every morning. Um, some employers are taking everybody's everybody's temperature um, with this little forehead thermometer. I've been to uh, to a couple places where uh, it's kind of scary the first time somebody um, 
a security guard stuck their arm in my car with uh, something that, you know, in, in their hand. I didn't know what they're doing, but it was the, the forehead thermometer. Um, they are relatively inexpensive. Um, and I think um, last time I checked, uh, easier to get than um, masks and um, um, hand sanitizer. Um, keep a close watch on, on employees' apparent health. How do they look? Um, you know, are they, do they appear to be well? Um, and then advise the employees how to report their own health concerns when a family member is sick. And I think it's in another slide. I suggest that you identify one person who's kind of the, the COVID-19 king or queen um, to whom individuals can make reports, make suggestions. Um, but you want, you want your employees, just like you're freely in, um, providing information, that they're going to provide information as well. Um, I actually don't have a clock um, near me. So if, if, you know, if I get um, over time, then, or if I get within five minutes of time, uh, Amy or Tiffany, jump in and tell me. Um, you have it, Mark. You're good right now. It's just, uh, just before 4.30. Okay, thanks. Um, implement and co communicate good hygiene policies and practices. Makes, again, like common sense, right? Um, cleaning, des first, designated management. Um, all right, I think I skipped a, a slide uh, to figure out whether I can go back. Um, let, me, let me jump to this implement and perhaps we'll go back if we have time. Um, Designated management employee is being in charge of COVID-19. I just discussed that. That employee should monitor governmental updates. What does that mean? Um, there's not a whole lot of updates coming out of the federal government, um, but it, they're coming from CDC and OSHA mostly if, if you um, see them. And so, you know, if you did a, um, a daily check, um, you would find those pretty quickly. Um, obviously, the, you're going to hear pretty quickly about state changes and about changes in our counties, um, which have some control over what um, can and can't be done. Um, common sense again, and, but, but put it in writing for your employees. Promote frequent and thorough hand washing. Maybe put signs in the bathrooms. Um, you know, we are all telling our kids 20 seconds, um, but you know, how many of the adults are actually doing that as well. Uh, again, it's just common sense, but put it in writing. Encourage respiratory etiquette, covering coughs and sneezes. Um, people, um, I, you know, I look at Facebook and there's uh, a lot of people complaining, uh, who, who like to complain on Facebook, as people have probably observed and but sometimes they're complaining that you know they were in store and somebody just sneezed, you know, without covering up at all, or somebody outside even, you know, coughed and spat on the sidewalk, which um, most of us would say, you know, probably not a good idea, and you're going to make enemies if you're doing that. But um, you know, put it in writing. Um, inform employees of the COVID-19 symptoms. Tell them to stay home if sick. Um, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time. There's some, um, you know, discussion about isolating sick employees in the um, CDC and OSHA materials. Um, but you know, to me, there's no isolating employees. It's it's just either uh, making them stay home to begin with, or getting them the heck out of the building um, as soon as you learn that they're sick or see symptoms. Monitor employees' health. I mentioned that before. Um, provide extra tissues and trash cans. Discourage sharing of phones, pens, staplers, other office equipment. Um, you know things that are uh, that used to be normal. You'd pick up a pen and you'd sign sign a document. Um, pick up somebody's stapler and and um, use it. Um, provide alcohol-based hand sanitizer and cleaners um, for mutual use equipment. So. You know, most places will have, uh, you know, one copier per X number of people. So it's going to get uh, you know, a lot of people using the copier. So if you've got um, 
disinfecting wipes right there on the copier, um, then it's much easier to for your employees to remember and be willing to wipe down what it, whatever it is that they've touched. Um, customers, uh, I won't really talk about, I said I wouldn't talk about customers, but um, again, think through, you know, what do you, what's gonna make your customers feel, um, feel comfortable? Um, I said I ate in the park, I told somebody I ate in the park last night, the place where we picked up our food, the person who brought it out um, wasn't wearing a mask. Um, now I wasn't wearing a mask either, but it struck me that I would have felt a little more comfortable had the person who is um, carrying my food to me um, been wearing a mask. Um, whether it helps or not, you know, that's something that would have made me feel feel more comfortable and probably would make some of your customers and clients more helpful or more comfortable. Um, definitely, um, you hear about people, you know, when you uh, go to meet people, that people will feel more comfortable with people who, uh, for example, dress like themselves. And so uh, in my class at, at law school, we talk about um, what, what you should wear for an initial client interview and whether it always has to be suit and tie or whether if you know that somebody's gonna come in in a, um, in more business casual, if you could wear business casual, or if you're going to somebody's construction site, um, you know, do you wanna dress down um, so that you don't stick out like a sore thumb? Um, you know, it's, a, it's the same thing with, um, say, the wearing of masks. You know, if I, with the rare client that might come into, or a customer or client, that might come into my office if I see them coming in and they're wearing a mask. Um, you can be sure that I'm going to put my mask on because I want that cu that customer to feel comfortable. Um, again, common sense. So um, back to regular workplace cleaning, um, cleaning and di disinfecting of sur surfaces touched by multiple employees, copiers, doorknobs, countertops. And just walk through your office and you can figure out what surfaces those are um, and do it. You can do it multiple times per day. It's not going to take, take very much time. Um, you know, I just said, remember the pre previous slide providing the, the disinfectant wipes next to the shared equipment. Um, continue great regular cleaning of the entire workplace, um, maybe even increasing um, that cleaning. Uh, most common household disinfectants will work. Um, if you if you want to make sure, if you Google um, you know household disinfectants and CDC, you'll come up with a list of you know what does work um, or what's approved by the CDC. But, but as I say, most disinfectants from the grocery store will work. Um, but then you know make sure that you're following instructions regarding concentration application method and contact time. So I read something uh, after uh, reading that, I read a bottle somewhere and it said actually, you know, whatever the whatever I was using should be on the surface for a period of 60 seconds. Um, and you know, I would have had it not having, had I not read that, I would have sprayed it on and wiped it off. Um, so follow the directions. Um, Providing PPE, PPE, excuse me. Um, I get a lot of questions or have received a lot of questions about that. Um, you know, do I have to provide masks? Do I have to provide gloves? Um, do you have to provide the hand sanitizer? Uh, the answer is that uh, there's a general over, overall OSHA um, requirement that was in effect before and has been in effect for a long time that employers basically provide a safe work environment for employees. So what does that, you know, what does that mean? Um, there is no current mandate that all employers in, in the state of Florida that all employers um, require masks or um, provide, excuse me, masks or gloves. Um, not anything that uh, requires them to wear masks or gloves. There may be uh, obviously, certain situations, certain types of employers, healthcare empl um, employers, where that is required. 
um, but um, no general mandate. That said, if um, the governor and or the um, Orange County mayor or the mayor of wherever you are says you should be wearing, continuing to wear masks when you're outside, um, then you know, should you be requiring that in your workplace? Maybe so. Um, it certainly maybe so, at least until people get to their workstations. Um, so, you know, once they're settled in at their workstations, they're distanced away from somebody, they can remove their mask. Um, I know, you know, I don't feel particularly comfortable um, wearing a mask. Um, and so do it, um, you know, only when I'm going into a store or where, or where other people may be. Um, and obviously, the more likely an employee is to be exposed due to the nature of your business, the more likely it is that you're required to provide masks, gowns, other equipment, gloves. Um, the Just a quick aside, the, the um, OSHA has three categories. Um, and as I said, most, um, most employers are considered minimal risk. Um, you move up to uh, a medium risk where it, which includes employers where they are likely uh, employees are likely to um, come into contact with a significant number of um, strangers for a, a lack of a better word you know not your regular um, in, uh, your, your regular other employees and then high risk and um, the requirements for what you do um, increase with, with um, the level of employee. Uh, this presentation is addressing um, all uh, basically your lower level. Hey, Amy. Hey, Mark. Okay. I, we ready I, to quit? I want to touch base with you to make sure that we do give the audience time for some questions. So okay. um, if, you, if you have just one or two more slides, we can continue. I do. Um, okay, perfect. Then okay. we'll wrap up shortly. All right, so I'm picking up the pace. What can you ask of required employees? So this falls under the EEOC. Basically anything you want. You can ask them if they're experiencing symptoms. Um, you can require them to report if they're experiencing symptoms, have been exposed. You can take their temperature um, as they come into work. Um, and in fact, if you wanted to, you can um, require tests of all your employees as they return to work if you can um, have access to tests or can send them to a testing facility. Um, you can do that with a new employee too. For those of you who have lost employees and have to um, run out and find new employees. Sick employee, get them out. Um, cond conduct contact tracing to find which other employees they've had um, contact with and send those employees home for self-quarantine. Um, uh, again, um, you know, consider whether there's there are others who should be informed of possible exposure and in compliance with the ADA, um, maintain confidentiality. So you can't run out and say, hey, everybody, Mark uh, has COVID-19, but you can say someone in our office um, either has or was um, uh, subject to the virus and, um, you know, I needed to let you know. Uh, when should you let an employee return? A pretty pretty easy to find on the internet. I don't like the symptom-based strategy, which allows the employee to say, um, I haven't had a fever for, for three days and 10 days have passed since my recovery. I'd prefer um, the test-based strategy, which is they don't have a fever um, or without medication, they've improved in symptoms and they get two negative tests. I think with uh, testing becoming more available, um, that's uh, uh, much more easily done now. So I'd rather have them have you um, know that they've actually received a test than be relying on the, the employee themselves. Um, quick clean the last slide: cleaning after workplace exposure or exposure. Um, close off all areas. If available, open the outside doors. Use ventil ventilating fans to increase circulation. Wait 24 hours to begin cleaning and disinfecting, and then um, you know, do a good job. Do a good job of cleaning. Um, with that, 
I will take questions. I'm going to take advantage of the, the, the chamber. Hopefully they don't mad, get, get, get mad and tell you that in addition to being an employment lawyer, I'm currently um, running for judge. And so I added one last slide there, um, which I'll take down. But August 18th um, will be an election for Orange and Osceola counties. And I'm running for circuit judge. And I hope you'll uh, look at my qualifications and consider voting for me. With that, um, questions. Well, Mark, thank you so much for those very practical and timely things that employers can do as they start thinking about their return to work. Um, I would like to open it up for questions. Um, I believe we have a couple of questions that have come through. So if you are on Zoom, you are welcome to type your question in the chat box or in the Q&A icon. Both of those can be found at the bottom of your screen. Um, in addition, if you have a longer complicated question for Mark, you can raise your hand through Zoom and I'd be happy to unmute you so you can ask your question. Um, also, if you're on Facebook, feel free to um, drop your question in the comments and Tiffany Cahill, our events manager, will be monitoring Facebook for your questions. And I'll just add, add that if you, oops, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, well, we have a couple of questions coming through, so go ahead with your comment and then I'll be happy to start on the question. Oh, I was just going to say also, if you have something that's, uh, you know, private, you don't want to ask in front of everybody, um, feel free to call or email me directly. Um, There's not going to be any charge or, um, or anything like that. I, you know, I want to help um, everybody, particularly in Winter Park, um, get back to work and, and, um, and, and, and thriving again. Well, thank you, Mark. And in addition, um, this presentation will be recorded and housed on our website at winterpark.org. And as Mark mentioned earlier, his slide deck will be included there as well. So if you want to reference something or if you want to share this with another member of your team, you're welcome to do so. Um, okay, so we have a couple of questions for you, Mark. The first one is, how do you handle the situation when an employee says it's allergies when they're asked about symptoms, but you're concerned it's otherwise? Um, I think that you can, uh, in this um, day and age particularly, uh, you have a lot of flexibility. Um, I think if you uh, see that somebody has symptoms, you're, it, it's within your authority, your uh, ability to ask them to go get tested and bring back a negative test, um, and, but to, to leave the, work, the workplace. Oh, I see the question there now. Yes, <laughs> and they also said thank you. So wonderful. Um, in addition, you talked about um, all the things that you can ask employees for. You can ask them to, to take their temperature, what their symptoms are. Um, are there any things specifically you can call out that you can't do or you should uh, be very cautious doing from a legal perspective? Yeah, so that's a good question. So, um, you know, what you're dealing with are um, I guess three things. One is the privacy, and I briefly mentioned that. So if you do have somebody revealing medical conditions, whether it's COVID or, or something else, they're discussing you know, why they um, think they need some accommodation, then you need to keep that um, um, confidential. Um, you can't um, discriminate on the basis of all the things that you, uh, you know, can't discriminate um, in the regular workforce, so or uh, a normal work workplace. So, for example, um, age is a difficult one. So, you, uh, I have clients who call and say, "I have this person who is 67 years old, um, and I'm afraid for you know, I I care about them. I want to take care of them. I'd rather them not work, but you cannot discriminate against that person based on their age. So they get to make the choice um, if they want to risk." Um, coming into work, uh, then they get to come into work. So it's really the um, uh, confidentiality um, and those discriminatory type things. Um, you, know, you read uh, uh, in the newspaper that um, unfortunately uh, blacks and Hispanics or African Americans and Hispanics have been um, on, you know, uh, that have high percentages of, of um, the cases. Um, so, you know, can you say, okay, I'm not going to bring back 
those employees, obviously not. Um, you can't do that. Does that answer your question? Yes, um, that's a great answer. Thank you, Mark. Um, we have another question that's come through. Um, if you're having employees take temperatures and log into a daily log, does that violate HIPAA regulations or are there any considerations you can help us identify? No. Um, no, it does not. It's, uh, and it's uh, the issue really is sharing. You know, are you sharing that with um, people who don't uh, have a reason to know, um, you know, whatever the information that you're, you're gathering? And that goes from, you know, from temperatures to, to um, you know, other information about their health. Um, but the, um, the regulations clearly state that you're allowed to take people's temperatures. Okay, thank you, Mark. And I'm just taking a look at a couple other questions that have come through. Um, so I have a question that is specific to um, temperature readings. Um, I don't think this is your area of expertise, Mark, but it's asking at what point can, do we become concerned about a temperature? So um, that sounds like more of a medical related yeah. question to me. Yeah, is there I mean, any I, legal, legal consideration there? I, I, yeah, I, it's not one, you know, I guess I could answer. Um, <laughs> I'm not a medical doctor, but I play one on Zoom. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, I, I mean, I, I think no. I think that everything that I've read is generally that um, people with COVID-19, that seems to be everybody that with, that has symptoms, that's the first thing that shows up. is, And that's why um, people will recommend or, or people are using the forehead screens. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, some people run uh, temperatures you know, my, my regular temperature is low, and so you wouldn't know that it might be, you know, four degrees high, um, mm -hmm. just because usually, usually it runs a, de a degree or more low. Um, so I don't think you'd be able to, to tell that. And again, you know, I think you probably have, want to ask a doctor anyway. Absolutely. And it sounds like from your presentation, the important thing is to have a written policy um, to be sure that you're not discriminating or making on the fly judgments. Is that, does that sound right? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think you want to have, write these things up. As I said, a lot of it's common sense. Um, but when somebody uh, you know gets sick and wants to say, uh, "My employer never told me," you know, you've seen in the newspaper a couple of lawsuits about um, you know not only they didn't provide um, say masks, but they never told me that I needed one, or they never told me how to use this. Um, uh, they never told me what practices I needed to follow. Mm -hmm. So write those down so that if 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 that happens, you do have that and and you've got it as evidence. You know, hopefully you don't have the, that situation, but um, you know that's the biggest thing is documentation with with potential liability. Well, thank you so much, Mark, and thank you, audience, for your questions. As I mentioned, this will be posted on our website at winterpark.org um, for your viewing on demand later. Um, thank you, Mark, so much for joining us today, for sharing your expertise. It was wonderful to have you on. I enjoyed it, and I hope it was helpful to some people. Definitely was. Um, and we hope that those on the call will be encouraged to join us this week. We have another full week of webinars for you. Um, tomorrow, we will have All American Water Restoration on telling us how we need to be preparing our buildings for reopening. So all those details about clean, cleanliness and preparing your building for your employees and for your customers. Um, on Wednesday, we have an exciting webinar with the City of Winter Park officials, city officials that will be talking about the Winter Park specific considerations, as well as the exciting news of closing down Park Avenue for Mother's Day weekend for you to enjoy with your family and friends. Um, on Thursday, we will have an, a couple of Advent Health physicians on to discuss some of the health-related aspects of COVID as we move into this next phase. So thank you again for being with us today. We hope that you will join us for one of our future webinars and continue to subscribe to our daily briefings. Um, both can be found at winterpark.org. Mark, thank you once again, and thank you, Tiffany Cahill, for all your help organizing this webinar and all of our webinars. Good night and have a wonderful evening.